My name is uh, Steve Barrett. I'm the Director of Public Works here in Brattleboro. And what I'd like to do is kind of give people an update of where the Department of Public Works is at uh, after this big storm that we've had. It's been over 30 days since the storm ravaged the, the west end of town. We, uh, we lost several bridges on Cook Road. We lost a bridge in Stark Road and also on William Street. So we had some very large damage, uh, damage to buildings and people's personal property. And my job has been to, with my crews, has been to protect the water supply um, and make sure the wastewater system's working properly and to make sure that our roads and bridges are safe for the public. And we've, uh, right currently, right now, we're working with FEMA um, to look at all the projects that we did have uh, during the, the storm, when I say projects, actually damages that we had. And it started in the downtown area, which most people are familiar with, where the uh, Flat Street and Frost Place and Frost Street, Elm Street, um, were basically submerged in water. And with that, there was quite a bit of damage and also debris um, from mud and other uh, debris that came down the whetstone itself. There was a lot of trees that were down. so. In the last 30 days or so, we have cleaned up um, the downtown area, all the mud um, and a lot of the debris. We've taken some trees um, that were um, had fallen down and were affecting uh, public roads or properties out of the brook. Um, we have a new uh, temporary bridge on Cook Road, so the families there can get to their homes. They were isolated for uh, probably a couple weeks. And right now, we're also building a temporary slash permanent bridge on Stark Road. And we're trying to get these projects completed in anticipation of the winter months. The, the time is pretty, uh, it's coming pretty quick when we're going to be having snow. And hopefully we don't have um, a lot of snow, because if we look at these rainfalls, if it was snow, we'd be pretty buried. So with that, uh, some of the other problems that we did suffer uh, during the storm was we did have a, a broken sewage line and the line takes all of West Brattleboro and it broke in several places. There was a sewer trussle that goes over the Whetstone Brook and that resulted in a discharge of raw sewage into the Whetstone. Um, but our crews did a really fantastic job. They had the uh, pipe repaired and back in service within 48 hours which is quite a feat. And so now we're uh, going back to some of these temporary repairs and we're going to look at what we're going to do for permanent repairs. So a lot of the work that has been done um, is temporary and other parts of it will be a more permanent. For instance, the Cook Road, going back to that, that was a uh, temporary bridge and at some point we'll, we'll be looking into the future to build a more permanent bridge. And with the uh, wastewater treatment plant, uh, that things worked out pretty well down there. We, uh, if people recall, they lowered the water in the Connecticut River as part of the uh, Vernon Dam project and we identified that our outfall pipe was cracked so that'll be another project that we'll need to look at to uh, make a repair and also a lot of our roads up on Ames Hill Ames Hill was used as a major connector road to our our good friends in Marlboro and Wilmington and during the storm our crews uh, rebuilt Ames Hill in Brattleboro and also in Marlboro Road so that uh, supplies could get to Wilmington and, and Marlboro. That was the main route that the National Guard used. It was also, we sent tractor trailers um, of food over Ames Hill, which is a dirt road by the way, um, but the, the crews did a fantastic job in getting that road prepared and ready um, so that our good friends again from Marlboro and Wilmington could get the supplies that they needed in their community. So overall, uh, you know, I, I think we're in pretty good shape. We're going to assess all the damages. Today we have a meeting with uh, FEMA to assess all the damages. Um, I'd hate to put a number on that right now. There's, uh, there's two separate sets of funding. Um, one set of funding is uh, federal aid roads, and that covers just a couple streets, but major streets, William Street and also Flat Street and Elm Street, and it's a separate funding source that the town could get reimbursement and that's funded at 100 percent so we're, we're quite encouraged by that and the other is the FEMA which is traditionally 75 percent um, is what they would refund the town 
and also the state um, potentially can kick in another percentage, anywhere from uh, you know 12 percent, 10 percent. So you know we're we're putting all this uh, together to determine the cost, and and there will be some costs to the town that are above and beyond what our normal budget is, and we'll have to um, come up with a method to. Uh, utilize some of our existing fund and possibly delay some projects that we anticipated doing um, because of it because of the financial burden as far as getting ready for winter um, today we're paving Cedar Street which I know has been it was actually put off because of the storm we've had a lot of feedback from the public where the Cedar Street was actually a dirt road for some time and it was quite a challenge for people but that road will be paved today and that's one of our last projects as far as preparing for winter, as far as uh, paving projects excel. And any other projects, we did have a project up on uh, Ames Hill that will delay till the spring because we just don't have time to do it. And our maintenance crew right now is getting our, all our plows prepared and our sanders because um, this is the time of year when we, we get all the snow fighting equipment ready. And also we've uh, ordered our sand that will be coming in and um, we have our contracts for our salt and other supplies that we use during the winter. So the next 30 days we'll be uh, kind of getting ready for winter and, and that's really the update today from Department of Public Works. Well right now we're in the Department of Public Works, we're in the maintenance bay and here the maintenance uh, the department is responsible for taking care of all the dump trucks, the backhoe, the specialty equipment that we have here at Public Works. Um, right here is one of our uh, dump trucks that we utilize for snow removal. It's also used in the spring to haul materials. And during the most recent storm, it was used to haul materials and take materials away from the storm. Our maintenance division um, takes care of this right now. They're doing a, a engine re just uh, maintenance on this particular truck, and maintenance is pretty important. So this is what keeps our fleet going. This is the Department of Public Works uh, a continuation of the maintenance shop. This is our fabrication shop. Um, as you can see here on the wall, we have all types of metals um, that we use to repair plows and trucks when they're damaged at nighttime during plow removal. Uh, one of the things is we don't have the luxury of going to somebody to have them repaired in the middle of the night. So actually our crews here can uh, weld and put the pieces of steel together to rebuild the plow if it, it is damaged. So this is uh, kind of the nuts and bolts of our fabrication shop. This is uh, an another section of our maintenance department right here. This is a backhoe that had problems with the cab, so our maintenance division has uh, taken the cab off. They've made the proper repairs to uh, fix that cab, and they'll be putting this back together. This piece of equipment is used uh, out to dig up and to repair piping, and also it's used in the wintertime. It can be used to load trucks or to remove snow. This is our large snow blower that people see uh, commonly in the downtown area. Um, this piece of equipment is self-powered and is hooked to a large loader. And the large loader uh, has controls on it and can regulate the, uh, the speed of this particular piece of equipment. And when it uh, picks up snows, it can snow, it uh, takes and directs it right into a dump truck. It can fill a dump truck in about seven seconds, so it's uh, very powerful. It does a lot of work in a very short period of time. And commonly, you know, after a big storm, you, downtown area, the snow's all piled up and the street's very narrow. And it has a huge impact. And we usually pick up the snow in the nighttime. 
And when people usually come into town, you know, you hear a lot of people go, wow, look, at, look how wide the street looks. Um, and that's thanks to this piece of machine right here. This has been uh, a part of our fleet for many, many years. Um, and this particular piece was just upgraded about four years ago. So it's a, uh, it's a big part of our snow fighting pieces of equipment. This is uh, one of our loaders. Uh, the loader is, is a multi-use uh, piece of equipment. It's used to load sand or salt to the dump trucks. It also has a plow attachment. Um, this piece of equipment is also used with the snowblower. Um, they work together. On the front of the machine, it has a quick hitch, and what that means is um, we can pick up a bucket to load a uh, dump truck, and then the bucket can be uh, disattached, and a plow can be connected in just a matter of minutes. So it's a very versatile piece of equipment, um, and you'll see this on some of the streets. Uh, it does plowing, and again, it also loads sand and salt. It's a multi-purpose piece of equipment. We have two loaders here, or graders here. The graders are the largest pieces of equipment that the Public Works has. These graders are used on the uh, main roadways uh, during the winter time to plow and scrape. They have a lower blade that helps scrape off ice on the uh, paved surfaces. And also, there's very large plows that go on the front. When we put the two graders together, they go down the street in tandem. They can plow. Of approximately over 22 feet of roadway in one pass. So we get a lot of work done real quick with these large pieces of equipment. After, uh, in the wintertime, after they leave the, the uh, paved surface roadways, these uh, open up the back roads. We have 34 roads of dirt roads, 34 miles, excuse me, of uh, dirt road, and these open up those, those dirt roads and push the snow back on those back roads. These are also used in the, uh, they're very important in the springtime if we have mud season. These are the, these are the uh, pieces of equipment that actually improve those roads to get people to their homes out at, during mud season. This underblade also, this lower part is used to grade the roads, that's why they're called a grader. Um, and the gravel roads are uh, all prepared pretty soon, I'll probably in the next week or two, we will be out on all the gravel roads and they'll all be uh, uh, scraped off and smoothed off and then we'll do a chloride application and they'll be prepared for the winter. And with a smooth road, it just makes it easier to plow. Okay, uh, now I'm outside of the Public Works garage and we're in a little field here of plows and all these different plows um, are all prepared uh, for the winter. The smaller plows that you see in the front uh, go on uh, one ton trucks, the smaller trucks, they all have quick hitches. Uh, these larger plows out here, these go on the dump trucks and the graders and you can see the size of them, they're uh, 11 feet long, 11 to 12 feet long, and uh, they're all made out of heavy steel. When uh, we looked earlier, we saw the fabrication shop, all these metal pieces. At times, these will get hit, and what happens is the maintenance department will re-weld these, and then they'll repaint them to get them ready for the year. Right now, all these plows are ready to go, um, and pretty soon we'll be using them, and, and who knows how much we're going to be using them. but. Uh, Last year was a, was a pretty big winter. We had a lot of snowfall. And if the rains, anything like, like we've had, turns into snow, we'll, we'll be prepared to fight that. These are the, uh, there's a pair of sidewalk tractors here, and these remove all the snow um, on the sidewalks. We have a, a list of sidewalks that we uh, remove snow on. There's approximately 13 of them. Uh, 
we tried to hit the main roads, the places like Canal Street and Putney Road, that what we can, and also up on Western Avenue. And that, that uh, helps the children get to the walk to school, to be able to walk. And a lot of people um, walk now um, as an alternative. And so the sidewalks are pretty important to keep open. These are, this is like the big snow blower, but it's a smaller addition. The, the snow comes in here and then it has a chute where we put it off to the side. It's a difficult job for the operator because the sidewalks are so narrow in places, it becomes quite a challenge. Um, the operators have taken these machines and rolled them over. Um, luckily, we haven't had any serious injuries, but uh, it's very challenging. And plus, you can't see a lot of the obstacles that may be in the way. Um, Quite often, we'll have damages to people's fences and other things that, you know, we uh, we work with the homeowners in the springtime, but we do we do have some problems. This this uh, particular plow, if it hits uh, uh, edge of the sidewalk that has a uh, raise in it, it can knock the machine left or right. So it's pretty hard to control, and they do it at a slow speed. Um, it's a pretty big workhorse, and this piece of equipment will be replaced. It was approved in the budget last year, so we hope to have uh, the newer machine in this year. This has been in service for quite some time. This is one of our newest dump trucks. Uh, the trucks, dump trucks we keep anywhere between 12 and 10 years that they get cycled and replaced. These are really the workhorse of the Department of Public Works. Um, each one would be assigned to a plow route in a particular neighborhood. Uh, these big frames right here, they accommodate the large plow. And then also this particular plow frame has what they call a wing and it's an additional plow that goes off to the side so they can plow more of the roadway with one pass. Um, this truck in the back it has a uh, the dump truck portion of it that is filled with sand and then we also have a, uh, a sander attachment to that so that's how it uh, either sands the back roads or salts the, uh, the uh, paved roads. So. Over here, we have an example of one of the older trucks. This truck is, uh, has been a part of the uh, Public Works family for quite a while. It, uh, it's going to go on uh, 10 years here pretty soon. You can see that the vehicles are kept up pretty good by the operators. Um, you can start to see some wear and tear. Um, we're pretty rough on these trucks, especially in the springtime when we have to haul over the very muddy roads. It's very tough on the uh, transmissions and the uh, the uh, hardware of the dump truck itself, but they uh, seem to be very dependable and, and they're good vehicles for us. This is, this is a, again, another one of our dump trucks. Uh, this has a uh, quick hitch attachment for all the plows, so it doesn't have to have the frame on it um, all the time. And what happens is they drive up to the plow and they have a quick connect system to put the plow on or then if they need to uh, haul gravel and such, they can just disconnect it and go. You can see the size of these, I'm six foot, and just the uh, front of the top here is, is over six feet high. So they're, they're big trucks, uh, and again, they do a lot of work for us. I'm standing in front of the, uh, what is called the salt shed. This is actually an old building from the fairgrounds. There was a huge fairground on Fairground Road where the high school is, and this is one of the one of the remaining buildings that's left from that uh, old fairground. We utilize it to uh, stockpile our salt. This building holds approximately uh, 400 tons of salt. We, uh, we write off the uh, state contract. The state of Vermont does a contract for salt each year and we're able to use their bid price which saves the town a lot of money um, because the state purchases quite a bit of salt. 
Um, over the years, our salt consumption has gone down. We've actually reduced the amount of salt that we use, and that's because of some of the new technology. We actually have instruments in the uh, trucks that tell us how many pounds that we're spreading uh, per mile of roadway. And what that's done is it's actually given us more efficiency on the salt that we use. So pretty soon we'll be uh, filling this uh, shed up in preparation for the winter. Right now we're at the uh, Department of Public Works sand pit. And each year we purchase approximately 4,000 yards of sand. And the sand is used primarily on the, the dirt roads, on the back roads, those 34 miles of uh, back roads that we can't put salt on. Uh, we put a bid out each fall. We've already had the bid out now. It should be, we will stockpile this mountain. You'll see we'll be uh, full of fresh new sand. Uh, the sand that we use, we've, we've gone with a little bit bigger, bigger stone. Um, and that also helps uh, on these back roads to, uh, to give people more grip on the road. When the, the uh, sand is taken out of here, there's a screen over here. The screen takes some of the frost, gets into the sand, and, and causes large chunks. And what that does is it breaks it down, and then the operators with the loaders will load it onto the trucks, and then they'll go out and distribute it on the back roads. Now each time uh, a truckload uh, goes out of here, that's approximately seven yards of sand, just to give you an idea of how much we use. And in a year's time, we use approximately 4,000 yards. So, you know, if you do the math, that's quite a few dump truck loads that actually go out on the back roads. The advantage of the sand with a little bit larger stone, it actually, um, in the springtime, when everything all melts off, that actually applies a little bit more gravel to those back roads. That's why another reason why we're using a little bit larger stone. So it seems to work twofold. It uh, gives people traction in the wintertime, and then it actually helps the roadbed on those gravel roads. So as you can see that the stone here, when we uh, look at it, you'll see the smaller pieces of stone. And that's what actually gives uh, more grip to the roads. Um, in the past, we used a very tiny, tiny stone. We tend not to use uh, sand on the uh, paved roads unless we absolutely have to. And we do stockpile a part of this uh, sand pile, a smaller stone, because we, you know, we'd be fearful that it might hurt people's windshields and stuff. So we use a smaller stone uh, in town and we use a larger stone sand on the back roads.